So today we're going to talk about um, beautiful smiles and dental implants. We're going to start off with chapter one, the aesthetic zone, soft tissue considerations. We'll talk about diagnosis and treatment planning. We have a phrase in implant dentistry that bone sets the tone, but the soft tissue is the issue. So we're going to talk about different types of tissue, different types of tissue biotype. First, we'll talk about normal tissue biotype, thick or flat tissue biotype, or thin and scalp biotype. And this really impacts our treatment plan, our diagnosis, and our surgical and our prosthetic approaches. For our normal tissue biotype, we have tissue levels that are stable. Our stable tissue levels allow us for a gingival scalp for about three to four millimeters around the osseous crest. This gives us a normal exposure of our anatomic crown. Next, we have a thin scalloped tissue biotype. These tissues are unstable. We have high gingival scallops uh, from the osseous crest. We have normal exposure of the anatomic crown, but the patients are also prone to recession. These are very challenging aesthetics, and it could be a very easy surgical case as far as their bone levels, but the soft tissue parameters make it much more difficult. So these are challenging cases and really not for uh, the person who is a beginner in implant dentistry and even uh, moderate implant dentistry. Next, we have the thin biotype here where we can see the patient has recession, uh, has never had any dental work done. So these are challenging procedures. We may want to do connective tissue grafts. We may want to do a flapless surgery and also consider conventional fixed partial dentures rather than implants. Our patients who have thick tissue biotypes, we have stable tissue levels, we have a flat gingival scalp, and our tissue is covering our anatomic crown many times. This is prone to pocketing, but it's also very predictable for our aesthetic outcomes. We can have a patient like this, we have uh, missing teeth and, and an uneven smile, and we can move that into our periodontal surgery and implant placement, really develop nice gingival architecture with our thick gingival biotype. Next, we'll talk about some of our incision techniques. Uh, from some of our incision techniques, our most predictable and the safest uh, incision technique for implant dentistry is called the papilla sparing technique. In this technique, we have an incision which bisects the, uh, the ridge and at the same time preserves the papilla on either side. This prevents recession and uh, promotes healing in the area. So as you're starting to get into implant dentistry, if we have an intact area many times without grafting, this is your most predictable flap that we'll use in implant dentistry. It's an excellent incision for implant dentistry. We can have predictable placement. And depending on what type of papilla we have, uh, that's where we'll bring our incision lines back to um, as far as how far back on the palatal aspect. But this could be a very nice surgical technique. We have a nice healed ridge, nice wide ridge. We can do a flap of sparing the papilla. We can wind up exposing the bone so we can evaluate our area and we remove the chance of any recession on our adjacent teeth. So very predictable and a great incision for implant dentistry.